Further along the route, you're in Powell, Wyoming. Detachment 16 shows us the shape of things to come. What do they get us checking out, huh? Detachment 16 has an authorized complement of 85 people who maintain and operate a full range of electronic training equipment, including two MSQ-77s, our primary bomb scoring radar units, the MPS-9 threat radar, the unit that trains electronic warfare officers to evade anti-aircraft fire, and our primary threat radar, the MPS-T1. The building has ample space for maintenance and for supply. This includes backup equipment and parts for operating equipment now in use, and room for new training units, some on order, others on the drawing board. For between runs, there's a convenient break area. The operations officer has plenty of working area, and the site commander's office can accommodate a good-sized meeting. Those who want to meet lots of people and make lots of friends need not apply, right? Wrong. Yeah. It's vitally important to maintain equipment. It's equally as important to maintain people. Attractive family housing located near schools and other facilities is a good start. The in-town housing in Powell is located just a stroll away from a complex that contains the BX, the commissary, and a well-appointed game and recreation area. The site has something for everyone, including those who don't get enough high-tech in an eight-hour day to keep them happy. Powell has an auto hobby shop, as well as a body shop. For those who don't feel in tip-top shape, there's a dispensary with a corpsman assigned full-time. Obviously, all this didn't just happen. It began 470 days before Detachment 16 went operational. It was born in a conference room in 1st Combat Evaluation Group's headquarters at Barksdale Air Force Base. We drew up the proposed low-level route on a sectional chart. Then 430 days before activating, we took the proposed route to the regional FAA representatives for their study and approval. Then, with 420 days to go, we made a field investigation, flew the proposed route looking for options. Then we checked out several locations that could potentially score aircraft and serve as permanent sites. And Powell seemed to fill the bill in every respect. Using a transit to shoot the horizon, we were able to determine we could actually track an aircraft at 500 feet for about 30 miles. Next, we brought in a mobile radar unit. And 360 days before the route was opened, we performed a tracking test, flying the entire route using a B-52 and an FB-111 crewed by one CEVG evaluators from Barksdale. This verification flight cross-checked our coordination with the FAA, safety and flight hazards, and our radar tracking capability. We produced photographs and charts, and then selected the sites to be developed. Powell was chosen as the first of six new permanent detachments and a model for others yet to come. At this point, we coordinated with the FAA, briefed the Director of Operations SAC headquarters, and began a thorough assessment of the impact the proposed route could have on the environment and on the community. Good community relations was a necessary part of the plan. The Air Force has been uh, vital to the economy of Powell, and, and we welcome them here. Yeah, I've been here in this Powell community for 60-some years, and this is the best shot in the arm that I have ever seen. It's good for the community. My husband owns a drugstore on Main Street. Powell in the Air Force is great. I've enjoyed the people I've met so far, and I hope to meet a lot more. All the problems. Small airport operations, bird migration routes, noise levels, new towers, the thousand and one things that can snag the process were confronted. And as you can see, it's working out. A final tactical fly-in was conducted across the entire route, and the new strategic training range complex 
was officially opened. This point is Port 2-0's designated target. By using electronic scoring, we can simulate the weapon's release and thus leave the terrain of the target area totally undisturbed and safe. Fort 2-0 should be here in two minutes. Power bomb flight, power bomb flight, Fort 2-0, over. Vet IP inbound at 31352, ready to copy information. And 2-0, plot will clear you on frequency at this time. Go ahead and run information, please, sir. The AN-MPS T-1 threat radar simulates a surface-to-air missile system. He's IP, he's dropping on four, six, and eight. This for a Gulf and ODR, flying TA. Comes controls. You got it. Train block, asthma block on. Got him in elevation. Stand by and launch permission. Go ahead and launch. I got him locked on. Copy. Launching. Stand by impact. Impact. Now that the electronic warfare part of the run is complete, emphasis shifts to scoring the bomb run. Track target four. One, three, five, decimal five. One, three, five, decimal five. Reviewing the day's activity, analyzing, evaluating, replotting scores, searching for errors, searching for trends. Range 2850. 2850 range. The most qualified people we can find are the ones that we want for the exacting job that we do. The best we find are the ones we keep. We're the quality assurance people. Our mission, provide command standardization, evaluation, radar bomb and electronic warfare scoring, and such contingency warfare support as may be assigned. We must never forget, today's exercise, the tone we hear today, could very well be tomorrow's reality. Tone break, the moment of silence that tells us we're on time, on target. Tone break, the moment of silence that says it all.